<laughs> All right. Well, thanks for jumping on. Um, we just officially announced your hire, and we have a group of our uh, our local media here that pretty much cover us every single day um, in D.C. So come you know February, we've seen a lot of them. Uh, okay. So we want to get you on the phone with them real quick and talk about your hire, and uh, I will introduce them. They'll raise their hands through the call. I'll introduce them, and then we'll go from there. All righty. All right. Uh, we'll start with Maria Torres from The Athletic. Hi, Darnell. Nice to meet you. Hi, uh, nice to meet you too. How, um, when did you first hear from Davey about this opportunity and, and what did you like about it? Uh, well, I talked to him uh, last week and, uh, you know, just the thought of uh, it's an organization that I know I was born and raised in that organization, uh, worked my way up from the bottom, um, managed in the minor leagues, was a hitting, was a, a roving hitting uh guy in the in, in the organization um so i knew um the organization well obviously when you're when you get an opportunity to come home so to speak it's always nice um but uh, me and davy go way back i mean we played together in cincinnati uh we've always talked hitting you know when when you're um sitting around you're always talking hitting uh trying to figure out what what the best approach is off certain guys and and and, and what their thought process is uh, when they're attacking you and your thought process is when you're attacking them. So uh, we've always been aligned in that way. Um, we've always, uh, uh, you know, for the most part, in, during the winter, I mean, we see each other, we'd always talk, you know, we played on different teams and all the other stuff. So you kind of share information, but I think that as we got older and started coaching, uh, we've always, uh, you know, wanted to, to, uh, figure out a way to be with each, you know, be with each other, kind of line things um, and see uh, how that would go. Um, and luckily enough, uh, this is a great opportunity with a great organization coming off a world championship a couple of years ago. Um, it allows me to uh, come in, see some of the best hitters and best players in the game, watch Ryan Zimmerman grow up when he just uh, signed and then obviously evolved into a world-class player and a world-class uh, person off the field. So. Um, my hope is, is that I can talk him into coming back. I don't know if that's possible, but if that's possible, believe me, that's on the table. I will try with everything I have because uh, he is a huge part of this organization uh, from top to bottom, first class guy, first class uh, family. Uh, he does so much off the field. He's, his presence in the clubhouse uh, is something that uh, is immeasurable. So uh, having him there would go a long way to, Reassure, reassuring that veteran presence that makes a lot of sense when it comes to uh, evolving as a uh, young team. Now you've only had about a week to re-familiarize yourself with the organization, but um, is there anything in particular you've kind of already pointed out or thought about that is something that you could, you'd really like to dig in on with this group? Well, I, I think uh, with Juan Soto, the, what I've dug in there is that nobody under any circumstances is to mess with his swing. He is the uh, epitome of what a uh, great major league hitter is. He understands the strike zone. He uh, pays attention to detail. He understands what they're trying to do. He does his homework. He uh, doesn't let the moment get too big for him. He stays to the middle of the field, uh, his best quality is that he can basically get a hit whenever he wants to uh, to the opposite field, which is uh, tough to do, you know? So um, I think a lot of people in baseball understand the kind of player he is. Obviously this organization does. And uh, my objective is to make sure that he gets as well as everybody else, everything they need uh, to ensure that we on a daily basis can compete against any team. But again, it's, it's, an offense that when we're not hitting home runs, because we're going to hit home runs, uh, we've got to figure out a way situationally to score runs uh, when we're not hitting home runs. We got to get guys on. We got to get guys over. We got to figure out how we're going to get those guys in. We got to control the strike zone. We got to uh, make sure that uh, you know sometimes you got to have tough conversations when guys are uh, you know swinging outside the the zone or they're they're trying to do too much or not allowing the next guy to do his so again analytically we're trying to make sure that uh walk percentage chase percentage swing percentage all lines up are we swinging a lot uh are we are, are we making good contact great then that's fine but if you're swinging a lot and then now that leads to chasing a lot that means you're not walking and then we're going to fall off the cliff so there's multiple ways that we've got to figure out 
what each individual guy needs and we'll attack their strengths uh, and we'll also attack their weaknesses because we got to make sure that we we have a consistency that leads to balance throughout the lineup from top to bottom. Okay, Mark Zuckerman, MassiveSports.com. Hey, Darnell, welcome or, or welcome back, I guess, actually. Thank um, you. Thank uh, along those lines, what you're just saying, this is a team that uh, struck out the fewest times in the league last year. I know that's always been something Davey has taken pride in, uh, in contact. Where do you sort of fall in line with the, the uh, philosophy? Because we've seen in the sport where strikeouts have less of a stigma attached to them than certainly when you guys played. Uh, where do you sort of fall in line with how strikeouts figure into this? And is leading the league in fewest strikeouts like a, a, a key thing that you would try to focus on again? Well, again, it, it's it's the team that we that we have. I think that um, the consistency of guys understanding the strike zone allows us to not strike out as much. It's when guys swing and get pitches on the edges, and we're chasing, and we're not uh, aligned with understanding what the pitcher's uh, trying to do. So we're game planning. We're always trying to make sure that I got our guys understand what the other guys trying to do to them and the big pitcher as a group. But again within the framework of our big pitcher, you know, they're going to pitch one different than they are the, the masses of our team. So we've got to understand that in some instances, um, the general scouting report works for the group, but then other instances, we got to make sure, you know, that Juan has a, a better idea as to what those two or three things that he's looking for and uh, allow that to kind of uh, translate how we attack hitters or, or how we understand Pitchers are attacking us, but also sharing information. When you come back from the batter's box, all oh, this guy's heater's got a little bit more run, a little more sink, you know, that sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's passing the baton to the next guy and, and allowing him to do his job. But I think, you know, overall, the, the offense is in a good place. Um, I think that we don't, like you said, we don't strike out a lot. Uh, but the consistency of allowing the pitcher to hang himself uh, we've got to do a better job of doing it. I think sometimes we can be a little over aggressive uh, in situations where um, we can be less aggressive and force the pitcher into a corner and force him into making a mistake instead of us being over aggressive and letting him off the hook. Um, and back to your relationship with Davey, I know you only played one year with him, uh, yep. but cross paths plenty of times over the years. I mean, over the course of a career like you've had, you meet tons of people in the game. What is it about Davey that sort of has always stuck out as somebody that you were both friends with and wanted to work with? Well, we lived uh, a quarter of a mile from each other, you know, for, for about 15 years. So we always saw each other. Um, we always uh, hung out for the most part, you know, families hung out and uh, kids were about the same age. So we all, you know, we, we go on family vacations and that sort of thing. But um, I just think uh, Davey is, is a ultra positive person. Like I, he wants the best for each individual player. He understands the ups and downs of, uh, of games when guys are struggling again, cause he's done it. He's, he's, he's gone through the struggle. He understands that he knows hitting's not easy. He knows that, that, um, you know, guys are throwing harder and, and, and guys are elevating. And, and now you've got, you know, the, the whole launch angle uh, era going on. So he understands all that, you know, but at the end of the day, um, he also wants us to understand that when we when we step in the batter's box, one, we have a plan two, we have an understanding of how you're going to be pitched. Uh, and three, we want to make sure, uh, most importantly, that you're swinging at the right pitches and making good decisions. And I think that we've always been aligned in, in that aspect. I think that um, he's going to allow me to uh, to uh, put my stamp, so to speak, on the offense and make the adjustments that are necessary. Uh, but he also is going to be involved. He wants to be involved. We'll sit down a lot, talk hitting, or what he sees. It's a different set of eyes and all that. But at the end of the day, he's going to he, he, he's allowing me to go out and do my job so that these guys know that any and everything uh, that uh, these players are going to want and need will be taken care of. And I mean, taken care of pronto. Thank you. Yes, sir. Jessica Camarado, MLB.com. Hi there. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Um, you mentioned Juan, obviously already an established hitter, but there's also so many young players on this team. What's the approach that you take for players who are just starting these um, like early phases of their major league careers? 
Well, like, let's just say, uh, kaboom, let's just, let's go there. Like, like him, like Austin Riley, you know, for Atlanta, you know, for the last couple of years, there have been struggles. Um, you know, the thought of sending him up and down, uh, based on, uh, development, is he ready? Is he not ready? But I think that I'm a player development guy. And a lot of my, uh, player development, uh, was brought about in this organization. So I understand what it takes to be patient with hitters, what it takes to uh, sit down and, and talk to guys about their bats and understanding what they were thinking, uh, what actually happened, and then how we correct it moving forward. So um, uh, you, you, you have those sort of conversations. And sometimes those conversations are tough, uh, you know, where you have to go down to the end of the bench and say, okay, I get it. But in, in that situation, uh, that wasn't the right time to, to swing or, or be over aggressive because, you know, we had a pinch hitter coming behind, you, you know, whatever, whatever the conversation is, you got to be willing to, uh, you know, pat them on the back when you need to hug them when you need to, and then kind of uh, push them along when, when you have to and be a little more stern. But I think at the end of the day, so long as they know you love them and they have a trust in you, then that's going to allow us to make the adjustments necessary so that these guys can flourish on a daily basis. And there is now in this day and age with analytics, there's like 5 billion statistical categories that you can look at at any point in this season. Um, which, right. which statistics matter to you the most, which categories like actually show this is success or this is an area that still needs some improvement. Well, again, I, I mean, I, I, I look at the, the swing percentage, you know, how much are we swinging? Are we making consistent contact when we're swinging? Uh, are we chasing? Are we, so that means, are we, are we swinging at balls a little elevated? Are we swinging at balls a little in off? Are we swinging at balls down in the strike zone? What are we doing when we get to two strikes? Are we able to uh, compete and put a good at bat together? Um, at the end of the day, that allows us to consistently get a feel for if you're swinging a lot and you're, and you're having success, then we're, we're, we're in a good spot. There's not a whole lot that anyone can say. If you're swinging a lot and then now you're starting to chase, then now you're not allowing yourself to walk and that becomes a problem because now your on base percentage goes down. You're not passing the baton to the next guy and, and, and it doesn't uh, lead to a cohesive offensive. Now it may lead to an occasional, you know, home run in the air to the pull side, but, but I think uh, our guys have got to understand and I know they will is, is that, our offense is predicated on, on hitting a pitch that you feel like you can attack and put, get a good swing off of. But that's predicated on you allowing the pitch to dictate or the location of the pitch to dictate where you're hitting the ball and no predetermined swings. So these guys will sit down, we'll talk about it, we'll go over the analytics. Each individual guy, uh, I'll sit with them and say, what analytics makes the most sense to you? And then we'll have our version of what. what I can appreciate that, but we want to add one or two or maybe subtract one or two that make the most sense. Because I just want to make sure these guys get everything they need uh, so that we can compete on a nightly basis. You know, especially when you're in a division where you got DeGrom and some of these other pitchers where you may uh, only get one or two opportunities a game to get these guys. And we got to make sure that we're, we're on it, that we got to make sure that these guys understand the consistency of battling and not giving away at bats, not giving away pitches. So we can force the, the pitcher into a corner so that it allows our offense to co cohesively uh, stay where it needs to be. And I think this is a great offense. Howard Fenwick, Associated Press. Hi, Darnell. <clears throat> well, Hello, how are you? Uh, what, what would you consider your greatest strength or strengths as, as, a, uh, a, as a hitting coach? but also maybe just generally as a coach working with players? I, well, I, I would say one, communicate. I mean, you have to be able to communicate, uh, you know, and get your message across, whatever that message is. You've got to be able to, uh, to be a good listener. you got to be able to understand and listen to what a player is going through, having gone through it, and then be able to evaluate that information so that you can come up with a plan that makes sense. But again, the player has got to have a lot to do with, uh, you know, what's going on just based on the fact that what he's feeling 
And what I'm seeing may be two totally different things. I got to make sure that one, he trusts me. Two, uh, that I can understand exactly uh, what he's going through. Three, I can convey my message to him as to where I think the breakdown issues are and then come up with a formative plan that's going to make sense, that's going to allow him to, A, be confident and comfortable, and B, be able to compete uh, on a nightly basis. And uh, it's all new, so you maybe don't have a plan yet for this, but I'm just curious how much would you like to maybe meet up with players uh, before gathering in spring training, or would you wait until Florida to to start getting to know guys and talk to them about your philosophies, et cetera. Well, no, I would, I well here, here shortly, I'm going to uh, get everyone's phone number and I'm going to call and introduce myself to them. Uh, let them know again that uh, we, meaning me, assistant inning coach, run production coordinator, or whoever the analytical guy is uh, that's with us uh, are so that they know that we're on the same page, that we're going to do everything that we can to make sure they get everything they need leading up to spring training, um, looking over all the numbers and, and kind, kind of see, uh, you know, where their, where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, and what and how and what their path to improvement is. Um, I want to get a feel for how they felt the season went, uh, positive or negatively. Some of it may be I didn't get enough at bat. Some of it may be, you know, that I got, I got pitched in hard and I couldn't lay off. They sped me up. You know, whatever those breakdown issues are, I just want to make sure that they know that uh, leading up to spring training, we're going to do our homework. When we get into spring training, understanding exactly, I'm going to, I'm, I'm probably going to do a little less talking because I want to see, I want to pay attention to, I want to make sure that you gain people's trust before you make suggestions uh, as to how uh, things may or may not be changed. Uh, but uh Lastly, I just want to make sure that they're confident and comfortable that once we get into the season, that we've done everything possible to prepare them for a championship season. Because I think that this roster is loaded from top to bottom. We have veterans like Juan Soto and Josh Bell. We also got, you know, the younger core, you know, uh, trying to uh, get a chance to sit down with the young guys, you know, Ruiz, uh, Robles, Hernandez, you know, guys that have potential to be great hitters, but for some reason they're, they're, they're hot and cold. Like their, their, their peaks are, are good, but then their valleys obviously aren't so good. So it's trying to get them more on a level playing field, trust in their ability to do certain things. Um, and, and again, if that's someone that swings too much, kind of try and rein that in and, and, and kind of get us get, you know, get to the point where you're, you're getting better pitches to hit. If that's, uh, you're you're swinging at too many breaking balls. You're not reacting to breaking balls. Then we have ways to to uh, formulate plans so that we get a little more consistent at swinging at pitches that make sense when it comes to breaking balls and uh, such so forth. And so again, in the big picture, just want to make sure that these guys understand that we're all on the same page and we'll we'll turn every stone over to make sure they get everything they need. Just one little tiny detail. Where are you right now? I am in Tampa at my at, at, <laughs> at my house. Thanks. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Jesse Doherty, Washington Post. Yeah, no, thanks for doing this, man. Yes, sir. I think it's uh, some combination of a lot of things you've talked about. But if you had to just you mentioned earlier your stamp um, on a team or your in an offense, if you had to kind of distill your stamp down to. Um, what you what you feel like it is, uh, how would you describe it to us? Uh, well, I, I, again, it's dominate. Let's dominate the strike zone. Let's let's. And how do how, how do we do that? That's 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 we're controlling the strike zone. And we and we and so that we make good decisions. Um, that's game planning, understanding what the pitcher is trying to do um, so that now you can make your adjustments in game. Or, or pregame, however, however we do it. Again, uh, we've got to make them just based on how the game flow is, sharing information, and then lastly, being situationally aware. You know, understanding that the scoreboard is going to tell you everything you need to know, uh, and, and, and you've got to understand, you know, once you get guys out on the bases, we've got to figure out a way to get them in. We've got to get them over. We've got to get them on first, get them over, get them in. And, and, but most importantly, 
at the end of the game, I look at the stat, the left on base. How many guys did we leave on base? You know, if we left an enormous amount of guys uh, on base, and that means that we're not doing very well with run, hitting with runners and scorers. So we've got to clean that up and make sure that that each and every run we score, preferably early, allows our pitcher to relax and go out and pitch. So um, the consistency our, our, of our offense showing up every night is not going to be based on home runs. It's going to be based on us going out and battling every night, not giving pitches away, not giving at bats away, trusting the next guy next to you. Uh, so that if I don't get the job done, he'll get the job done. Yeah, I think as Mark mentioned earlier, this was a team that made a lot of contact last year, but it wasn't always getting runs in or sometimes there was not hard hit percentage or whatever it is. Is there maybe a difference for you between hitting the ball or, and also just pitches maybe you ca- could swing at, but maybe you shouldn't because it's not a pitch you can drive. Like, is there a distinction there that you'd like to make with hitters? Well, I think each individual guy, it's, it's different. I mean, some, I mean, Juan Soto is Juan Soto, you know, that, that, that's, that's God given. I mean, you, you, I think we all know that. And, and he's one of, if not the best hitter in the game, you know, but you know, each and every guy has his own routine. Each and every guy has to go out and compete and get pitched away so that he can understand that he's got to stay within the framework of his strengths until they force you uh, to your weakness. And again, you wait the pitcher out until he makes a mistake. And but if you wait him out and he makes a mistake, you can't miss the mistake. You know, so you've got to make sure that a uh, you're on time so that you can make good decisions, because a lot of times it's not necessarily a mechanic that gets you in trouble. Maybe you started a little, little late. He sped you up. Um, he quick pitched you. So now you're in between. So there's a there's a, a line in the stars, a realign the stars when it comes to making your adjustments from pitch to pitch. But uh, most importantly, just allowing yourself to get in position, slow it down so that it allows you to be on time so that you can make good decisions. And when you make good decisions, it's going to better our chances of consistently hitting balls hard and uh, putting big numbers up every night. And, la- and the last one for me is uh, if you've had, if you've been watching the postseason, is there anything that stands out on a team level for those clubs that are doing it really well and making it this far that you think is, you know, an interesting trend or notable? Well, and, and again, I jotted a couple of things down, like the Braves, for instance, the Dodgers, the Astros, the Red Sox, they all have homegrown guys. Like they developed their own players. You know, the, the Braves, Riley Freeman, Albies, the Dodgers, Seager, Will Smith, Bellinger, Astros, Correa, Altuve, Bregman, Guriel, Red Sox, uh, Devers, Bogarts. You know, so these all these teams – have homegrown guys. Well, it's the same thing with us. Uh, we, 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 you know, we've made some, some uh, trades and we made some free agent acquisitions, but you have Juan Soto, obviously. Uh, you have Hernandez, you have Robles, you have Ruiz, you have guys that have come through our system that are going to allow us to flourish from, from the bottom of the system up. So they know, they know what we've gone through. They know all the challenges. They get to the big leagues. And you're 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 developed, but at the end of the day, there's a developmental plan that we've got to have in place for each individual player, so that once you get to the big leagues, you're able to compete on a regular night. It's not like you're giving it bats away or giving pitches away, and because uh, at the at the major league level, and especially with this team, you're trying to win. You're when your your objective is to win every night. So we've got to have these guys ready from day one. Once we get into spring training, make our, make our adjustments. We've got six weeks to get them ready. We get them ready, and then once the season starts, now we let them go, and, should, and we should be good to go. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Maria Torres, The Athletic. Darnell, you mentioned a run production coordinator. Um, is yeah. that like a new position? You no, see? again, I, I, I haven't sat down with our analytics group and, and, and figured out or, or what the title is of uh, the person that's going to be working with us and, and doing a lot of the work. Uh, so I randomly threw that run production coordinator out there. So maybe that might be the, the title of, of that person. But, but you know, that, that person's going to do a, you know, a lot of the scouting work, uh, you know, putting the scouting reports together. Um, you know, because, again, that person's vitally important because the information that we give or get uh, to the players is, is going to be what allows us to compete during games. So we got to make sure that 
all that stuff is spot on what pitchers do, why they do it, when they do it, how they do it, and then how we're going to make our adjustments to attack that pitcher on a nightly basis. Uh, I think that, you know, the number two and myself are going to be, are going to be doing a lot of the physical work where we're doing, we're on the field, you know, we're either throwing BP, you know, we're having conversations, uh, we're on the backfield, you know, doing all the extra work, the physical work that's going to allow us uh, to be successful. So, I mean, it all goes hand in hand. Um, it's a trust factor with the information that, that we're given to the, to the players. Um, it's a, uh, trust factor that, you know, when guys look at the information, you know, this, this, uh, is a little too much, this isn't enough, you know, so we can make our adjustments and make sure that each individual guy gets everything they need. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is for us to be prepared every night to attack and compete against whoever's on the mound, and and with and we and they've got to have the information available to them that's going to allow them to. And again, we have we have all the iPads and the dugouts and all the other stuff, so you'll be able to see, you know, what guys' pitches do and when they do it and all the other stuff. But knowing all the vital information and analytical information that's going to allow us to you know, what, you know, tendencies and all the other stuff that some of these guys have uh, so that it gives us a better chance to uh, compete on a nightly basis. So um, is it safe to say then that you're, you're kind of hoping to have a hand in, to hire two to three guys to help you out? Uh, well, I mean, uh, my hope is, is that um, that's possible, but even if it's not, I, I mean, we can get it done uh, between the framework of the two or three guys. It's just a matter of, uh, having that one person that's dialed into uh, that area alone and not having that person uh, be torn away because he's got to run out to throw BP or he's got other stuff going on. He can dial into that information so that um, the consistency of that information is based solely on him and him being able to dial into without any outside influences or any work things that he's got to do other than just that job. And when you got on the on the call, you mentioned that you guys were looking for a spot in the house to to do this interview. Is this um your office? Or, like, where where are in their house? Yes. Are you? yes, this is this this is my office. But the the problem was is that you know I tr I tried to to do the uh, the Zoom, but it was on but it was on my phone. So then I didn't I I didn't want to be locked into this little screen. So I wanted to make sure I did it on my iPad. So yeah, my wife finally got me all hooked up. So we're good to go. What's a uh, what's on the walls behind you? Is it playing memorabilia or a combination? It is a combo. It is a uh, my World Series uh, jerseys up top, and I've got all the the World Series the champagne and all the other stuff uh, there. And then I've got different photos of when I was playing off to the side here. And then I've got jerseys and my World Series trophies on the other side of the. Uh, of the room. So, yeah, I mean, it's just a subtle reminder to myself that uh, I'm looking forward to, to having another one. And I think this is a great opportunity. This is a great group of players, great organization from top to bottom. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. Thanks so much, Darnell. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. And we'll finish with Bradford Davis from Baseball Perfectus. Hi, Darnell. Nice to meet you. Um, I mean, you too. wanted to, uh, uh, you know, I, I obviously, uh, you know, you, you likely know this as, as, you know, all the teams are informed about it, but Major League Baseball did introduce uh, a new spec baseball this year that was supposed to, I guess, change the uh, offensive environment in the league. And we did see, you know, um, offensive stats decrease this year relative to, you know, 2019 and 2020, especially. Uh, I am curious from your, uh, you know, in your experience, uh, if you noticed a change in how the ball kind of performed or traveled uh, this year relative to the last few years? Well, I, well I, in my case, I mean, I was in Arizona and um, there was a humidifier. So it definitely changed there um, where, you know, the ball didn't go as far and, and all that. So that I, I could I can de definitely notice it there. When you went to Colorado and things changed the other way, they have a humidifier, but the ball still uh, flew. Um, just based on the fact of, the, you know, the light air and all the other stuff. So um, I think, you know, all in all, I mean, it's so long, it's so long as it's, it's, 
to the point where each team is, it, is it's no different for any team more so than the other. Uh, then, you know, I think that um, everybody's on a fair playing field. So it is what it is. I, I think that, um, you know, irrespective of how much, you know, they change the ball and all the other stuff, it's still, you still got to square it up. You still got to uh, go about your business and uh, hit the ball hard. You've got to, you, you got to figure out ways to score runs. Even if the ball's not flying, you got you, you to figure out ways to score runs irregardless. Like, for, you know, for, for instance, the, the Braves, the Braves and the Dodgers and the Astros and the Red Sox. Again, they're, they're both, both teams are hitting home runs, but both teams still can score runs with, without the home run. So it's a, uh, it's, a, I mean, I mean, again, it's, it's fun to talk about, but at the end of the day, I mean, it, it's just something that uh, you try not to uh, allow get in the players' hands because, uh, like I said, no team's got an advantage or, or disadvantage over the other. They all got to go out and play with the same ball. Thank you. And uh, you mentioned, you know, having the humidor in, in uh, Arizona. Um, did, uh, did that impact your approach, I guess, to how you coach hitters on, you know, what to do? Um, I guess, you know, when they saw the pitch? No, no, I, I, I think you, that's the one thing you don't talk about is, is that sort of thing. Cause then that gets in your mind and then guys swing harder and try and do too much. Uh, so that's the last thing you wanted to talk to them about. I think again, the consistency of having a good approach, being on time uh, goes a long way to put you in position to hit the ball hard without trying to do too many things. So no, I very rarely talked about it other than as soon as somebody talked about it, if they talked about it, all right, now let's, let's take that off the board. We don't want to talk about that. That's, that's a negative. We want to stay positive and just move forward from there. I feel that. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome.